Okay. Hey, did you two listen to that very first lesson? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. So in the first lesson, there was a man who was a great warrior, but and he wasn't he wasn't uh, part of Israel though. He was somewhere else. And you know what? He had this skin disease called leprosy. You ever heard of leprosy? Yeah, it's in the Bible. In the Bible. And it was a skin disease, so he had like these things all over his skin. It was contagious, so nobody else wanted to be around. And is a warrior going to be able to go out and fight if he has a skin disease and he's itchy all the time and he can't be around people? No. So he wants to get healed. But you know what? He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have any doctors or anybody who can help him with this. Well, what do you think he did? Any ideas? Who would you ask? What would he do? Oh. <laughs> well, Naaman saw that from a servant, from a slave, that there was somebody in Israel that could help him. This great prophet was there that could help him. And you know what? Sometimes masters don't always listen to the slaves. They don't always think they know what they're talking about. But you know what? He pursued it, and the king wrote a letter about it, and he went down to see Elisha, and he got, uh, he went down to get healed. And you know what? He found he traveled all that way, and he was such a powerful man. He was so important. He figured the prophet was going to come out and see him. Did the prophet come out and see him? The prophet just sent him a direction Go get washed seven times in the Jordan River. Does that sound easy to do? Not because he saw No, no, he saw a messenger back and forth. He didn't get to see. Uh, yeah, Alicia. So, do you think that's easy to do? Just dunk in a river seven times. Yeah. But you know what? He was stubborn. He was such a powerful man. He didn't want to do it. But then another servant helped him. Another servant said, Hey, if it's so easy, why don't you just try it? And he did. And you know what happened? All that skin disease was all healed. But it took two people who he didn't think were really important people to get him to do it. It took a slave girl and then it took another servant to make sure that he actually went and did it. Sometimes we forget how important people are in our lives. And I want you to think of some people who are very important in your life and I want you to thank them this week. Can you do that? Can you think of somebody important in your life to thank? <laughs> All right, well, think about it this week, okay? Thanks for coming on. <laughs> no. It's the process. <laughs> so I was reading through the gospel lesson, and all I kept thinking is, boy, many times God gets a lot of blame. But we don't always thank God for everything that we get. And I mean, when things don't go right in life, God gets blamed, right? I mean, maybe not officially and directly, but it does if you're an insurance company. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people in Florida. Unfortunately, there's people in Florida who have now know God fully too, unfortunately, from uh, Hurricane Ian. But Others are rebuilding and they're turning in plans, and it is considered an act of God. I think the same thing happens if a deer is done something from your heart, right? Marty? That's right. an act of God, too, right? It's not the act of deer, it's God. You're orchestrating every single deer and your car where it's going. <laughs> um, an unavoidable accident, fires, all those kind of things, some fires, depending on. You know, the cause of fire, especially if it's like lightning strike or something that happens. All things are God. Acts of God we can't control. And that's not the only thing we blame on God at times. When somebody gets very sick, we get angry at God. When we pray for healing for someone, we can get very angry at God. And sometimes, rightly so, sometimes. We know God could have intervened and God doesn't. Now, we don't understand 
sometimes even the whole way through this lifetime, we don't understand why God did it. And oftentimes we figure out later on in life, many years removed, why God didn't intervene in something or did intervene and we didn't even see it. But let's face it, we all have moments in life when we want to just blame God for something that went wrong. Whether they're big things, I mean, people who have lost children often blame God. Or little things when some a day goes very wrong at work and nothing's going right, you think God might have cursed you that day and given you a rough time because you haven't done what you were supposed to do. Maybe you're in trouble. And yet, we might might pick out the most random things in the world and blame God for them. But how many of us don't pick out the same random good things and thank God for them? How many of us are quick to blame, and not just God, it's other people too that we do this with, but how many of us are quick to blame when something goes wrong, but slow to give thanks and to count it as blessings when something goes right. When you're running late for work and that parking spot is right there, um, right near the entrance to work and you get to take it, do you give God a little note of thanks? So, some days maybe, but many days we don't even think about it. We think it's our own life when something good happens. And then you think about all the other little things that happen. When somebody helps you with something, and it was something that was really tricky for you and you couldn't quite figure it out, do you see that person as a messenger from God and give God a little bit of thanks for what happened? Or it's just a bright, sunny day out and everything's going your way and things are just beautiful. Do you remember to thank God for those blessings? Sometimes we do but sometimes we don't. And so when we read this story of this healing, we start to think, well, why didn't nine of the other lepers come back and thank Jesus? But if we're not even thanking God for things, and the lepers certainly don't understand that Jesus is God, they understand that Jesus is a great healer. They probably heard that Jesus is a great rabbi and he's taught many wise things, but I don't think any of them are saying, oh, this is the Messiah, this is the one. Maybe they were, but it's unlikely that they fully understood who Jesus is. I mean, most of us are still working to try to fully understand who Jesus was. So certainly in that time, uh, before the resurrection, they didn't quite understand who this man was. And so, they go off on their way. And it made me ponder how many times am I not just thankful to God, but how many times do I forget to say thanks to somebody who helped me in life? To somebody who just gave me directions when I needed them was lost. To somebody who gave me a great tip uh, for baking or uh, for something with the kids. And I don't even think to say thank you. For somebody who's done a lot for the church and I forget uh, to give them a thanks for all the little things that they do. There's an awful lot of times when I am guilty of not saying thanks. And so for all those times, I wanna thank the members here because all of you have done something in the past, uh, whether it's just a smile and a, and a cheerful greeting, and many of you have done many other little things along the way. Um, Past your appreciation month, I always teach them that you don't have to put it in every week. Um, people know by the beginning, and she's a tip I do. And but it's past your appreciation month. If you didn't catch that the first five times, did you see it? But I want to make sure that you know. You can't have a pastor who gets appreciated without congregational members who are appreciated for many gifts that they give. And thank you for many things. 
but it makes me ponder what other people I would have never sat down and planned. How many times I thought, oh, I should write a thank you note to so and so, and I am famous for this. Maybe the rest of you aren't, but I'm famous for thinking, oh, I need to jot a thank you to this person, or I need to call this person. They helped me out with this, and I forgot to say thank you. And then the moments pass, and I'm on to the next thing, and I've forgotten to do it. And so with Harvest Home Sunday, with Thanksgiving on the horizon, and with thanking heart for all the many blessings that we receive, I'm going to challenge all of you to think of at least one person that you've forgotten to say thank you to and say thank you in some way this week. Do something for it. Either give them something, a little note, give them a phone call, whatever it is that you need to do. But just pick out that one person that you need to say thanks to. It makes a huge difference in people's lives to have that thank you given. But also know that when you're saying thanks to another person, you are often, if not always, saying thanks to a messenger from God. Because how many times has God put the right person in your path to help you out during a difficult time? How many times has God supplied just the right person to give you a smile and words of encouragement when you were having a really bad day? How many times has somebody reminded you that even though it's a rainy, dreary day, that God supplied rain so that crops will grow and will all be fed? Everybody knows people like that in their lives. I mean, I hope you can be people like that for others as well. But everybody knows individuals like that in their own lives. And every time they are acting on God's behalf. And so give them thanks and remember that. But I also want you to take it a step farther. And I want you to thank God for that person in your life and for the blessings that they helped you receive. You see, they probably never really thought about the slave girl in the house with them. And yet, if she hadn't said something, he would have never traveled down to be healed. And the servant was probably a little higher up on the ranks, the one who could speak to him and say, hey, this is so simple when he, Alicia says, just wash seven times in the Jordan River. You really ought to try it. But I don't think he probably didn't say thanks after this. Now he might. But, you know, it's a servant, and it was expected that the servant's going to help you out. So say thanks to all of those servants of God who help you, but say thanks to God for them being in your life. Because the end of this story, you don't always catch in the English translation, but not only does this one man come back and is he healed, but Jesus says at the end, your faith has made you well. The reality is the other lepers were healed too. Their skin is cleansed. But made you well means much more. It's so so. It means you're saved. It means your faith has saved you. Your faith has made you whole and at peace and joyful. Your faith has made you um not only healed from this disease, but at peace with yourself and has changed eternal life for you as well. So when we take those times to thank God, especially through Christ our Lord, our faith not only makes us feel whole, but saves us in the process. So, May you be saved and restored by your faith. May you go out and give thanks later.